I thank the gentleman for yielding, and I thank you for bringing up that important set of statistics. The example just used by the chair, distinguished chair of the crime subcommittee of a woman making a threat to go get a gun. Well, that's not covered in this amendment, is it? She's not protected in this amendment because the amendment says you can't put that kind of tag on somebody with respect to parents voicing an opinion about the upbringing and education of their children. That would not, have, that would not protect someone who actually makes a, a threat. Now, in keeping with that, when the, the, um, from the, the document just read by Mr. Gomer, there is no widespread threat that's against school boards, number one. Number two, who should take that up if there is the sporadic threat, local law enforcement, and they do. They do a good job and they take that up. And then I just wanna comment on something, what I think is a much broader issue. And this is when the, when the distinguished chair was talking about wrong-headed thoughts. Too many people listening to wrong-headed thoughts, something to that effect. In America, Free speech, the First Amendment, protects, protects speech. Where we have, curved, where we have carved out and, and, uh, is if there's threats. There's threats of use of speech to threaten and intimidate. We say that's no good. You yell fire in a crowded theater. You, you're not allowed to do that. If you commit fraud, we punish fraud. But if I have an opinion about an election that apparently the Department of Homeland Security finds that's not, not orthodox, that it's some, if I have a heterodox opinion about something, that can be classified as domestic terrorism. Whatever happened to the notion that you can have an opinion and express it in America no matter how repugnant, unless it induces to violence or fraudulent conduct. This, this bill undermines that. This amendment is just a small step to right the bigger wrong of this bill. With that, I'm gonna yield now to, well, 